Hey sixth graders, today we're going to continue talking about proportions and we're going to talk about how to use proportions to solve percent questions. Now, percent is something that you probably see in your daily life um, a good bit. For example, you might see them see percent on, on sales. Um, maybe something is 30% off or 10% off. You might see it using um, if we're talking about calculating a tip for something or calculating a discount like I've talked about before or um, calculating tax on something. For example, there's a sales tax on everything that we buy. Um, you can also use percent in data. For example, we use data to, um, to talk about like how you're doing on common assessment or benchmark. So when we tell you, you know, you need to be at a level five, we might say, you need to score at an 81% or higher. Um, and so we use percent a lot. So we're gonna talk about what is percent and how do we use percent to solve problems and what is the connection between percent and proportions. So let's go back to what a proportion is. Um, by the way, sorry, I forgot to tell you that this is ratios and proportions 3C. So this is standard RP3C. We're gonna talk about those proportions if you'll remember, a proportion is two ratios that are equivalent. Remember, a ratio is anything that is comparing two quantities. And when we set those ratios equal to each other in a proportion, we can cross multiply to find any missing values. Okay? And so in percent, percent is the ratio of a number to 100. Anytime we're talking about percent, we are using percent out of 100. Now, you may hear somebody talk about more than 100%. You probably heard somebody say, hey, give me 110% today. Well, it would still be set out of 100, but that would just be an improper fraction or a mixed number, okay? So, um, percent is always going to be out of 100. So, 100% would be equivalent to one whole. So, with that thought, anytime we set up a percent problem, we're always going to set it up part out of whole because percent is part of 100. The whole is 100. So, this is the setup that you need to write down on your paper every single time you see a percent, percent question. If I see anything related to percent, I'm automatically gonna write down this tool to help me fill in my proportion, to help me set up that proportion correctly. Now, remember we've talked about in proportions already that order is so critical. And whatever we put in the numerator has to be the same unit of measurement we use for all the, the numerators involved. And whatever unit of measurement we put in the denominator, it has to be used on, for all of the denominators. So that's why in this setup, percent goes with part because it is out of 100, it's part of 100, and 100 is always going to go in the denominator with whole because we are using 100 as our whole amount, okay? So let's get into our examples. It says find 24% of 17. Automatically, I'm saying, oh, this is a percent problem, I'm gonna write this down. I'm gonna write part over whole is equal to percent over 100. Now I'm gonna fill in what I know. What I know is 24. So 24% out of 100 is equal to part over whole. Now what I've got to figure out is what am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for the percentage out of 17. So 17 is my whole, and I'm looking for what is the part of 17 that is equal to 24 out of the 100%. Now, just like in our um, solving proportions video, we are going to cross multiply to solve for x. So we are going to multiply 17 and 24, and we're going to multiply 100x, and we are going to solve for the x. So, 17 times 24 is going to be 408. And 100 times x will be 100x. 
Now, in order to get x by itself, I'm going to divide by 100 on both sides. So now, when I divide 408 divided by 100, I get a decimal. I get four and eight hundredths, okay? So what that tells me is, um, if I'm looking for 24% of 17, it would actually be equivalent to four and eight hundredths. Now, check your reasonableness, okay? If 24 is a good bit less than 100, then whatever my x is should be a good bit less than my 17 because these are going to be equivalent, and in this case, it is, okay? All right, now, let's look at example two. In example two, it says what percent, again, I see that word percent, so I know what my setup's gonna be. I'm gonna go ahead and write it. Part to whole equals percent to 100. It says what percent is nine of 45? So in this one, X is going to be where my percent is because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for what that percentage is. And nine is smaller than 45, so it's my part. Nine out of 45. Again, that order is important because even though nine is less than 45, it could ask me what percent is 45 of nine. I, the, the relationship matters, okay? So I'm saying nine of 45, so that's my ratio, going back to that first video on ratios, nine out of 45 is equal to what percent out of 100? So now we're going to cross multiply. Nine times 100 is 900, and 45 times x is 45x. We're going to use that inverse operation to get x alone. So we're going to divide both sides by 45. So we get x is equal to, and we can type in 900 divided by 45, and we get 20. So what percent is 9 of 45? Well, the answer is going to be 20%. Okay? Again, this number should be um, less than 100 because 9 is less than 45. Now, let's keep going. 15 wrestlers arrived early to practice. If this is 60% of the team, how many players are on the team? Again, I've got percent involved, so I can use this setup. Part to whole is equal to percent out of 100. So let's look and see what we have, okay? I see that we have 60%, so that's gonna be 60 out of 100. So let's look at part and whole. What I'm given is 15 wrestlers. What they're asking me for is how many players are on the team all together. So really, in my words, I could say players, out of the whole team. How many players were there? There were 15 players, um, and I'm looking for how many does that make as the whole team? Remember that, part to whole. Part of the players were there, part of the team was there, but not the whole team, okay? So now that my setup is done, I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. I get 15 times 100 is 1,500, and 60 times x is 60x. I divide both sides by 60 using that inverse operation to solve the equation, and I say 1,500 divided by 60, and I get 25. So in this um, situation, um, how many players are on the team all together? There are 25 players on the team. Now, in this case, 
it doesn't tell me specifically what the order is, so it's important to realize that 15 is part of the whole. That's why we write parts of whole, because sometimes it's going to be listed um, in a way that's um, not as clear of what to put in what order. And that's why we need to remember that connection between part to whole. Remember, percent is part of 100. So for our percent problems, we are always going to use this setup. Write it down every time you have a percent problem, fill in what you're given, and solve for X to find what's missing.